Good day, Mama Baboon. We are back in our Grimdong walkthrough, and today, what we are going to do, now that we are at Homestead, we are going to start to explore a new area, the Rotting Croplands. However, before that, there are a few things that I forgot to do in the last episode. First, we need to complete the quest, a timely arrival. So we need to go back to the Dead Man's Gulch, and we need to go to speak to Urgrim. Hey, Urgrim, how are you doing today? So how doomed are we? I have secured the way via Rift Gate. I can't say I enjoyed my first travel. All right, and now they are all going to be at Homestead. So we go back there and we are going to speak to Earl Grimm again. I wasn't sure you'd make it, but you pulled through. Those I did what was right. The end of our troubles. But there is a mounting threat on the horizon that threatens to wipe us all out. What do we do now? Check in with Creed here, but I suggest you speak to Captain Somer. She's the Black Legion officer in charge of this sorry bunch. Look for the grumpy middle. Okay, so we need to talk to Captain Somer, and she's going to be just here. I'll skip the pleasantries. Orgrim tells me you're one tough slip, and right now that's what I need most. Will you fight for the Black Legion? Where do you need me? The Legion is split on two fronts. To the north, we have the Cult of Cathan. Nasty bastards keen on turning all of us into a puddle of blood for their rituals. I have my best men out there right now scouting ahead. The cultists are amassing in great numbers, and I'd like to know why. There is a more pressing issue, however, and this is where you come in. Olgrim says that you are experienced with fighting the Ethereals. That's good. You'll need all your skills for this one. Far to the west, beyond the infested farms and the rotting croplands, there is an area teeming with ethereals that we have started calling the Gruesome Harvest. It is a fitting title as the ethereals have been gathering corpses, animal and human alike, in order to conduct their sick resurrection techniques upon them. The barn there has been giving off a blinding aether light non-stop for the last few days and nights. That is, until today. Whatever they are working on, it must be nearly finished. And knowing the Ethereals, it's something monstrous. We can't risk the Ethereals discovering that we know about their creation. I need someone to sneak in there and destroy this abomination before it even has a chance to wreak havoc upon my people. We'll only get one shot at this, so I want someone who has experience dealing with Ethereal horrors to handle this mission. Will you be my champion? I will track down this abomination. Now, in addition to that, we have a few quests to unlock. Here's the first one. It's a damn shame about the cannons. This place would feel a whole lot safer if we had a few of these beauties mounted up on the walls. We had no choices but to abandon them on the road when the Aetherials attacked us in force. Thankfully, the bastards don't know a thing about artillery. What if I recover them? Then I will call you insane. Training into that area is nothing short of a suicide. There's a reason we call it the conflagration now. It's overrun with Aetherials. Even the very ground will cook you alive with ether fire. That's a quest that we are going to do later, but that's not going to be today. Here we have a faction merchant for the Black Legion. Same with the other factions. When we'll have a better standing with them, we'll want to buy all the recipe and blueprints. But that's probably not going to happen until we start Ages of Malmoth, the first DLC. Alright, now that we have that out of the way, now it's time for me to farm some dynamites. We will need at least two dynamites to unlock some parts in the rotting croplands. And to farm dynamites, the better way is to go back to the Arkovian foothills and to explore the two mines that are here. I'm going to skip that part, because you already know how to do that. And now that I have enough dynamite, let's go into the rotting croplands. Before arriving here, here we are going to work on the ethereal farm. This quest is fairly simple. You see these clusters, we just need to break them. And once we break 10 of them, we will just need to go back to Homestead. All the egg clusters are going to be around here, in the Thornsbury farm. In the farm and in the rotting croplands, we are mainly going to encounter two kinds of enemies. First, there are these Dermat Terrans, these kind of insectoids. In general, they have a tendency to do a mix of bleeding, pierce, and acid damage. But overall, anyway, they should not be too much of a challenge. In some part of the croplands, we will also find Ethereals. And I don't need to introduce them again, right? We already know everything about them. Alright, we get the last one. And later, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to Douglas in Homestead to get the reward to this quest. But first, let's continue west. We'll so level up. Let's continue to sink points into the Oathkeeper Mastery Bar. Oh cool, we unlock Resilience. It's not a game changer, but adding one point into it is generally worth it. What it's going to do is every time our health is going to drop under 
it's going to make us a little tougher for a while. And extra survivability is always nice in hardcore, so that's why I'm going to take it here. So we have a shrine west. Oh, but wait a moment, I forgot something. Let's go back east. There is a note that I want to take. This is for an optional small quest. Here in this house, there is going to be a journal. And that's going to unlock the missing diary quest. This quest is fairly simple. We will just need to return the journal to somebody in Homestead. And now let's go back to the shrine. We just need a mutagenic icor. You should have plenty by then. The insignia of justice, not really useful. Okay, sorry, I was checking something. So the last time we finished the Viper constellation and we need to decide what constellation we want to do next. There are a few good options. We are still working toward Ratosh and the Undying Gods that are going to be the two main constellations for us. And I think I'm going to start to unlock the Wendigo. It's really a nice constellation for us. It's going to add a lot of vitality damage to unlock a new companion, the Wendigo's Mark. And it's a proc that I will want to put on Siphon Souls to add some more sustain to this gear. That way, Siphon Soul will become something that we can use to heal ourselves. I would recommend that you check this house. There is a chance that there will be a corpse here, and checking the corpse will give us a new quest. Unfortunately, it's not here. It can be at three different locations on the map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the second location. The second location is this house. We can also grab this note, but we are unlucky. It's not here, unfortunately. Be careful when you're in this house, you will always have all these ethereals that pop up. It should not be an issue, but you could be surprised. So be careful about the ether on the ground. By then, you should know that it's going to drain your health very hard. So be sure to don't stay on it for a long time. And here we go, we are in the rotting corpulence. I'm first going to go south. There is going to be a small trade that is going to bring us to a rover camp. Where is it? Must be for the east. And here it is, let's grab the note. There is nothing special about this camp, no merchant and no important NPC, but this camp is tied to a quest that we are going to do just now. So let's go up north. And do you remember I said we will need dynamite? And that is to do this part of the rotting cropland. So we need to use the one to clear the way. And let's go inside. Please help me, I'm so scared. How did you get trapped down there? I was out playing by myself like mama said not to. I wandered into this cave when the exit collapsed behind me. Please, I just want to go home to my mama and papa. They live in the camp nearby. Why didn't they come look for you? I, I don't know. Why does it matter? Maybe they couldn't find this place under all the rocks. You're frightening me with all your questions. I find it odd that you survive on your own out here. I find it odd that you are so suspicious. Your mistress must be a reflection of your own poor character. Something seems off here. Take me from this place now. You are a deceiver, demon. So that was not a little child, that was Balognath, the Hellfire. He's going to deal a mix of fire and chaos damage. And in all the playthrough I've played, I never had difficulties to beat him. So that should be a breeze for you. And so if you give the little girl the same answers, you are going to fight here, but if you do decide to help her, what's going to happen is that you are going to find Balognath in the camp outside and he would have killed and destroyed everything. It doesn't have a lot of consequences anyway, because the camp didn't have any important NPC, but there is a small difference on the reward. If you kill her under the crypt, you get some rover reputation. However, if you let her destroy the camp, what happens is that instead of getting reputation, you get a component and I think it's a Riftstone. Riftstone are components that can add chaos damage. 
But anyway, we will get a blueprint to craft them later. So unless you are doing a chaos build, that's not a very important component. So we unlock the rift gate, and now let's go back to Homestead to collect a few rewards. First, we go talk to Douglas. Any progress with the damn parents? I have three other fields as you ask. I am relieved to hear that, and that you have returned in one piece. Damn parents should not be trifled with, especially in such numbers. I will speak to Captain Sommer about sending some guards out along with some of the farmers. We will have the field cleaned up in no time. In the meantime, I was hoping you would hear me out on the far more grave task. What is it? The damn Terran's hives are cyclical in nature. Every seven years or so, they birth a new queen, which promptly proliferates their numbers and causes them to explode across the countryside. In the past, we would rally together and exterminate the queen while she was still young. But after the Grim Dawn, the damn Terran's were allowed to thrive. She has to be destroyed. Otherwise, the insect will eventually run out of food and attack us in force. The queen is always guarded by two of her grand viziers, so you would have to acquire the pheromone glands to even enter her chamber. We know that the royal hive is somewhere out in the rotting croplands to the west of Hampstead. I will gladly pull together all of our end bits if you can pull this off. Alright, so we're going to have two things to do in the croplands. First, it's going to find the entrance to the swarm, and then we will also need to clear the amalgamation. Meanwhile, let's also sell our equipments. These handguards are not bad, but not much better than what we have. So I'm going to sell them, I'm just going to keep the one we have. This we don't care. I'm a simple man. Now that I have my bone spike, I don't need anything else. We can also equip the Vileskorn Greaves. I like them because they are going to give us more armor, and we also get some ether resistance, and that's going to be useful very soon. Alright, while we are here, let's also finish the missing diary quest. To finish it, we just need to talk to his Dela. Do I have another Mark of the Traveler to put in the boots? No. And Dela is going to be just here, so let's talk to her. Thank you for clearing out our farm. It's the best news I've heard in weeks. Oh heavens, I hope you didn't read it. It's not proper to stick your nose into a lady's private scribbling. Hey, you can answer whatever you want. Whether you say you didn't read the diary, or that our secret is safe, it doesn't change anything, you still get the same thing. Okay, so because we don't have a mark of the traveler, let's go back to Davis Crossing and let's get back the one we had before. Goodbye. Let's reapply it. And you know what? Let me take a quick break before we continue our journey to the rotting croplands. Okay, I'm back and let's go. We still have a few things to do in the rotting croplands. We want to find the swarm hive and the amalgamation, but first of all, there is something that I want to find. This is the corpse that contained the last wheel of Martos Everbrook. That's going to unlock a new quest for us. We already checked two locations before. Let's check the last one. It should be on the southwest of this map in one of the shack. Is it this one here? Hmm, I don't see any corpse here. While we are here, let's also do this totem. We do need to be careful about the titan, but there is only two heroes, so that should be fine. Let's see what we got. Cool, we get one recipe and one blueprint. We also get Shard of Menir and the Swamp Dweller's Leg Guards. Those are good Leg Guards. Let's take everything. And let's have a look at what we got. The Adept's Wand, the Ranger's Helm. Oh, and nice, we got the Royal Jelly Extract. That's going to be an upgrade over the other Royal Jelly recipe that we already have. And we also got, now this Insignal of Justice, we already had that before. But this, the Sum Dwellers Leg Guards, are very good. A lot of Acid Resistance, Health Regeneration, and 2 points to Spectral Binding. It is just a much better option to what we have. This Waste Guard does not have resistances. And what about this Offen? And this Offen seems very good. Plus 2 to Ravenous Earth. The main drawback is that we get less skill cooldown reduction and less resistance. But as you can see, we get a good boost to the damage per second. So I'm going to keep it. So that was a good totem. We got two items out of it. And let's continue our way. So where is going to be this corpse? I was sure it was going to be in the shack we checked before. 
Is it here? No. What about this one? Nope. Hmm. I think we missed it. We will probably need to restart the game and check the three locations again, but that's okay. We are not in a hurry, we have all the time we need. So normally what happens when you find the corpse, it will have a note on it and when you read it, it's going to give you access to a location where you will find an exalted stash, and this location is just here. Around here there are a lot of Dermapterans, and this is where we can find the Swarming Hive. It can spawn at different locations in the Rotting Corplands, but it's always going to be in these kind of fields here. Okay, and you know what? The fact that we didn't get this exact stash before, it's bothering me. So before we try to start to find the Swarming Hive, let me restart the game, and let's try to find this corpse first. Let's put back our two auras. And let's go back to the croplands. And again, what I'm going to do is we are going to check the three places where we can find the corpse. And hopefully this time we are more lucky. While we are here, let's take care of Blackthorn. And we get Vilescorn Leg Plates. It's probably going to be worse than what we have. The Swamdaler Leg Guards are probably the best item we can have at the moment. It's going to be hard to beat that. So where is the first place? It's going to be sauce. Here it is. So again, the cops is not here. So let's go back north, the second location. And here it is, finally I find it. The last wheel of Martos Everbrook. So you see, as soon as we get the note, it unlocks the hidden wealth quest. And now we just need to go back to the treasure location that I showed you before. So let's teleport back to the Rotting Corplan's Rift Gate, it's going to be faster. And let's run west. There is another totem. Let's also do it. I always like to do totems. You can always get good items out of them. And this is a similar one with the one we did before. A few titans and uh, one or two heroes. And now we're going to get as good items as we had just before. Let's see the virus bracers are less good. The Calastorian gave all is not for us. And the rest of the items just seem a bunch of crap. Unlucky. That's okay. As you can see, as I said before, the Vilescon leg plates are not very good. The Vilescon bracers could add some damage for our build, but they do not have resistances and they have less armor. And the rest, as I said, is no use for us. Okay. Oh, I have one attribute point. Let's use it. 
I completely forgot that we level up, so let's add more points into the Oath Keeper bar. And at that point, I'm just going to push the Mastery bar. And let's be on our way. We are not too far off the treasure location. It's going to be just north. And you see, last time we came here, the marker that is just up north was not here. But now that we have the note, we just need one dynamite, and it's going to give us access to one exalted stash. The Scarlet Marksman. Not for us. It's good for a bleeding build. The minus 10 to bleeding resistance is not bad. And now the last thing we want to do before we finish this episode is going to find the Swami Hive. So to do that, let's go back to where we were before. You will want to find this kind of wheat fields, and in one of them around here, there will be the Swami Hive. The spawning location is really random, could be anywhere around these fields. Let's have a look in all of them. Not here. Or Marek be electrified. Let's deal with him. There is a so course in just down south. And we get the Herald's Mask. The Herald set, if you have the three items, can be interesting. It can fit all the builds. It's going to give you a lot of resistances and a plus one skill for all the skills. So it can be a good choice if you have the three of them. It's pretty rare to get the three items though, especially on the first playthrough. Where is it? Where is the Swarming Hive? Oh, finally, it's here. And with that, my friends, that will be all for today. We are going to do the Swarming Hive next time. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to add a like and to subscribe. And see ya!